this process. We have crowned how God has worked hard to bring you here. Now we must look what we were talking. Last week we left off the preaching talking. You see, we don't want to be like Abraham humanity in this one. Go back to Egypt. You see, we're not going back. Amen? That ain't going to happen. We want to be like Ruth. We want to be like Job in spite of the challenges. Say, God is after something in my faith. God is after something in my faith. Just like, just like how he was after something in my sanctification. Just like how he was after something in my holiness and purification. Which was to be the first position. And to hope for my spiritual life. To see his thoughts and purpose. His now he's after my faith to perfect something in my faith to complete something in my faith to complete what is lacking in my faith so my God is a purpose for God I say the same thing as it is in heaven, so I say it unto you. God is after something in your faith. This is why when you're now in Bethel, Bethel is the place where heavenly rain falls. Bethel is the place God watches over all year. Deuteronomy 11, 11, 11 and 12 teaches this. But now you are in Bethel and there's a severe famine. Why? God wants something. When you are in Bethel, in the house of God, you're preaching every week, but the church ain't growing. You're praying like Job, and your family is falling apart. You see, you're, you're praying, and your success is coming undone. It's because God wants something. Amen. And I'm not talking ignorance. You're doing ignorant thing and getting the fruits. You're doing the right thing, but it ain't working. Mm. What you need to ask God is, like, what do you want? This was Job all argument. Job, I get if I was so in bad seed and I was getting bad one. Results. Yes. He, I deserve that. Yes. But Job knew he wasn't doing what? The wrong thing. <laughs> what he didn't understand what God was after. Amen. You see, if you want double glory like Elijah or Job, you have to pass through the second part of Bethel. Mm -hmm. And this, okay. yes, sir, the, the milk seems to, the rain, the heavenly rains don't seem to fall anymore. And you can't tell if God, you know, still, still is in this place because, because you're not seeing his thought. Your spiritual eyes not, not beholding what? Anything. Mm. So it's here, Abraham got, I, I better go to Egypt because nothing seems to be happening. I can see nothing happening spiritually and physically. <laughs> but you go, no, no, no. Though I'm not seeing it, I'm staying right there. Amen. Ruth go, though you have no husband, and I have no husband, and you can't get any more kids. Where you go, I will go. go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. What you eat, I will eat. And your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. In spite, it looked very dark and grim. Amen. She go, I ain't going. Naomi realized I cannot detour this woman. You understand? She have hardcore faith. Amen. She has bona fide faith. She is no Abraham. Mm. She'll not be bailing for the sake of her own skin. I want to look. The answer of what God is looking for. Mm. Why there's a severe famine in Bethel. The heavenly rain is not flowing. Mm. And you can't tell if God still cares about the place. And your spiritual eyes is not showing you nothing. Do you're praying, you're fasting. Mm -hmm. You're doing all the things you were taught to do. From the time you are in Shashem, when the teacher taught you, yet nothing seems to be released. It wasn't just a famine, it was what? A severe famine. You don't know how you're going to take care of yourself. You've got to get it ready like the widow of Zarephath to just make a cake and die. Yet it's better to die than to break. Mm. Faith with God. Go to James chapter 1. The answer is there of what God is after. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Go to the book of James in the name of Jesus. God is after something, just like when he was after something, bring you from Mesopotamia to bring you from Shechem of Moray. Now he's after something again in your faith. This is why once you know you're not doing stupid things to bring hell upon you, and still you're going through it, you should understand immediately God is after something. God is the one doing it or allowing it to get something from you. Are we James chapter 1? It could turn into tribulation. Mm -hmm. Tribulation is when it, it, there's famine and then there's severe famine. Severe famine is tribulation. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you're, if you're when you read Job, 
They, they, so one of Job's servants come and go, all the crops just get destroyed. Before he can finish talking, someone, another servant run in right away, and your children die also. Like, like it was just, it's like bad news upon bad news. So it's just tripling. Tribulation is just cons con consecutive attacks. It's just not easy now. It becomes tribulation. You see? So the book of James gives us what God is after, why Bethel is dry. Why the heavenly rain is not falling in the hills and the valley? How come you can't, your spiritual eye is not beholding all the wonderful works of God's hands? I'm your James, chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Now, when you read the scripture carefully to see what God is after. Verse 2, verse 1, James has introduced himself who he is. He's a servant of, of God. I mean, I mean, in verse 1, Ju, Ju, um, James has introduced himself. But verse 2 begin now the discussion, the discourse. He said, Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in, in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Why would I want to consider it joyful? I'm in trials or I'm in temptation. We human beings don't like those things. We like things, every, everything what? Nice and good, smooth, steady, moving up, don't go down. But James said, I want you to consider it joyful. When you're in trials, trials is things that are challenging you. And you have been tempted, though you have come to Shechem, and you have been united with Christ to the spirit of life, you have been tempted, like, like Abraham, to go back to what? Egypt. <laughs> Temptation is, you're constantly being tempted to go back to what you know, or what your father teach you, or your relative, or your country, or you used to do. This is temptation. Or to try something like Eve, Give concept to something and a judgment and a choice that God didn't give you. Mm -hmm. Temptation is always to go against what God tells you to do. Mm -hmm. He says stay in Bethel and you're tempted to go back to Egypt. Because when you look at Moab, there seems to be having a whole lot of fun. And when you look at Bethel, it seemed dry. Mm -hmm. How many people have been there? Mm -hmm. The thing you have don't seem to be working and God going, hold them. And the thing that you left and he took from you seems to be what? Flourishing. You want to give a concept. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe if I go back, you know, now with being before God and use those things, he'll bless it, even though those are the things you renounce. Are you listening? Trials, you are trying to hold. And when you try to do the right thing, you are being tested consistently. It is so hard as you try to stay in Bethel. It has become severe. Job one wife goes, curse God. He's not a good God. Go back to your whole God. Job turns around and goes, how can I ac accept good from God and don't accept what? The challenge. Amen. Tribulation is not just your wife is turning against you. It's like Job. It's friends. It's friends too. You have to turn and pray for them before God killed them. At the end. Are you listening? God was very upset with it. His wife, so he lost, he had the triple attack, he lost all his success and his children. His wife turned against him, and his what? Friends. <laughs> Woo! And how he was being tempted by them. One telling him, curse God. One telling him, accept your wickedness. Everybody have a concept and a judgment for him. And you open this hold to God, he could know. If Seth, I'm going to die, I'm holding to him. So James said, consider it pure joy when you're being tempted. Because that mean you're on the right path. Here's a secret. If you're not being tempted, you're in the wrong place. Yeah. If you're not being tempted, the reason the enemy don't have to tempt you, he have you. Yeah. Yes. He don't tempt you away from himself. <laughs> God is the one who calls you from him. Are you listening? Amen. If you are not being tempted on a daily basis, you need to check yourself. Yeah. Most likely, you're still in I. Most likely you're still working on the principle and the ways of ruin. Are you listening? When you are united to the spirit of life, you are being tempted to break away to be an adulterer all the time. All the time, every second. Why don't you train me for a while? You can have two husbands. Are you listening to me? When you're not being tried, you also know where you are. 
Because you are trying to operate to, sp to a spiritual law and everything around you can't see that law is doing yes. the opposite. Yes. You're operating vertical, mm -hmm. which is diametrically mm -hmm. opposed yeah. to the craziness around you. Oh, God. When it's not treating tribulations, tribulation status, you're typically not very effective. Mm -hmm. right? Amen? You might have the first two, but you're not necessarily effective. So James understood this. He said, consider it holy joy. When you are enveloped, meaning it's all around you, and then come to trials of any sort and temptation. Now look, so that is the pattern. That is the system that it comes by. Look at verse 3. He said, be assured. Be certain of what's going on now. And, and understand that the trials, amen, and proving of your faith, Bring out endurance, steadfastness, and patience. You have these things, but something need to bring it out of you. He said, listen, trials, tribulation, and temptation brings out endurance and steadfastness and patience out of you. So the reason God have you in Bethel and Bethel of a severe famine is to bring something out of you. He wants you to know, because he already knew it, what he put in you. That you have something to endure severe famine. He wants you to know you can be steady during the hardest season and period in your life. He wants you to know you can be patient and you won't fall to temptation, trials and temptation. Because you have the power of Jesus enduring through you. He didn't say, I'm going to give it to you. He said, I'm going to bring it. Are you listening? Amen. A woman has potential to have a child or a man, but it has to certain things has to happen to bring it out of them. Amen. The trying and the testing of your faith is to bring endurance out of you. Amen. This is what God was trying to bring out of Abraham. This is what it brought out of Ruth. Amen. Ruth and Naomi, what are you talking about? The fact that you, you have no husband and I have no husband and we don't know how we're going to live. I just give birth to endurance in me. What you endure, I will endure. What you are steady in, I am steady. Mm -hmm. What you have patience for, you don't come to this level of strength. You don't release spiritual strength, endurance, steadfastness, mm -hmm. and patience unless you pass through faithfulness. Mm -hmm. You have to pass through a season of challenging mm -hmm. in whatsoever way. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit more. Let me just finish this process. Oh yes, you got you don't give baby. The Bible says, whoever heard of such a craziness, the woman give birth to not any child, any child, any baby. No, that's not how God decreed it. Sorry, yes. <laughs> when you read um, Uzziah, um, um, Uzziah. See, yeah, because you're religious, it still hurts. <laughs> the Bible said in verse four, we're gonna come back to this process. But let endurance and steadfastness and patience. Have full play okay. and do a what? A thorough work so that you, now look why, so those need to run its course. Why? I told you God is after something. Amen. So that you may be people perfectly and fully developed. He is trying to bring you to maturity. Yeah. Amen. If endurance don't run its course mm -hmm. and steadfastness does not run its course and patience, you will remain imperfect. Mm -hmm. You have not been tested. Yeah. You have not released your full caper. Ability, but we don't like the challenge. So as a result, endurance never what comes out. Mm. Steadfastness never crystallized. Patience never solidified. You have to let the test complete. You must stay not just in the famine, in the severe famine. You must be like Job or Ruth. I know we got no husband, and most likely people might kill us and rape us on the way back. Yet I'm coming with you Amen. because if I only endure. And she did. And she met Boaz and she became the richest woman. Amen. Amen. She endured. Naomi go, we don't have a practical way to live. She go, you are going back though, which means you are something you are believing in. Faith, you are God of, of faith for Judah. Amen. So I'm going to yes. walk in your faith. Yes. She go, but you don't know my God. But your God has just become my God. Yes. Amen. Jesus go, nobody knows God, only the one that comes from him. But Jesus, because you know him like Peter, I am holding to you to know him. Are you listening to me? Amen. You have to understand. If you don't go through the trials, yeah. you nobody can say you don't have endurance. Yeah. 
Nobody can say you don't have steadfastness. Nobody can say you don't have patience. But what it could say, it is not perfected. Yeah. It is not mature. Because yeah. they'll watch you in a little circumstance, the first little situation or circumstance, and you come undone. Yeah. The Bible says, how small if you, is your strength? If this, the smallest little trouble, and you're undone. Mm -hmm. You're weeping, you're on the floor, you have no ability. Mm -hmm. Why? You were never perfected spiritually. You're probably a person that run away every time there's a little bit of challenge. Mm -hmm. You never got strong. Every time it gets a little difficult. Mm -hmm. You run. You take a vacation. You escape. You come back when things are what? Good. Somebody else fix the problem. Your husband or your wife lose their job and you're gone. Mm -hmm. When he come back in wealth, you're like, yeah. I'm sorry, I come back home. You're never maturing. You can never deal with anything. The Bible said, you let faith, let endurance, let steadfastness and patience. Not just do a work, do a what? A thorough work. You want it to meet its what? Its limit. This is why God does allow. Once you are a child of God and certain things can come on you, only God can allow it. Many times you go, it's the devil, it's the devil, it's God bringing about, God is trying to release something. Just because you wanted to get the principal position and open your eye, you need to get your faith to its what? Climax. Mm -hmm. So faith has to come to its full, faith full faith potential. Has, faith, faith has to come to its full potential. To release endurance. To release endurance. To release steadiness. To release steadiness. And to release patience. And to release patience. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, when it's, look, look what the scripture says. So it's full developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. It has to come to the place where it lacks nothing. Where is no way the enemy can tempt it. No trials can break it. No tribulation can overcome it. Are you listening to me? If this don't happen, you are vulnerable. You are vulnerable. No proper army. No government with any serious army sends a soldier into battle that has not been tried and tested. Part of the training they go through, there's a process called the assimilation training, real training. First, when they start training you, they're shooting blanks over your head. Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, they're shooting what? Real Live rounds. rounds. Because they have to know how you are going to behave in real battle. They can't afford, when you're in the trenches, you have, a, you, have a, you have a platoon of 500 people, and the enemy is shooting, and you start freaking out and running, give up your position to the enemy, and everybody get killed. Yeah. They can't afford this. So they need to know, you understand, that when they're shooting, you, you have learned to stay and hold your cover, and hold your cover until the machine gun ends, and they try to change their slot, then you attack. They can't afford for you to raise up and go, these are too much to start freaking out. So they make sure the training is what? Thorough. Yeah. That you learn to endure the pressure. Mm -hmm. They put you in terrible condition, make you sleep in mud and water. They have to make sure your endurance is thorough. They have to make sure you are steady mm -hmm. under difficulty. And they have to make sure you are patient to wait for the right time and season and period. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you can do this with it, it makes you sergeants and lieutenant and major. Those stripes come because you have endured. Amen. They are symbol that you have passed through the testing of times. Amen. Are you listening to me? I read a story recently. There's a pastor. And he's upset with his wife. He's really upset with his wife. Because um, she doesn't read the Bible. And she doesn't know the Bible. Being a pastor, that doesn't make him look good. Because pastors typically, as I said, their thoughts are preoccupied with God thoughts and God feelings and God purpose. So therefore, most of the conversation will happen where? Around here. So I guess she can't participate in the conversation because she don't have a lot of thoughts. So he's not happy with her. Unfortunately, their child got sick. I don't know how many kids they have. They probably have a couple of kids. And he's home during this time and season. And the child is really sick. And the child is crying. And the child is just whining and the child is just experiencing a terrible time and he can't focus on the Bible and he can't you know do nothing he can't tell like daddy you help me daddy I'm feeling hot daddy I can't come just non-stop he turns his way can't you make this child keep quiet no he know the scripture he know first Corinthians 13 love is patience 
Love is forbearance. Mm -hmm. L love is forbearing. Love is preferring others over you. Mm -hmm. Love is merciful. Love is kind. Love is not just. He knew all the process. But a child is revealing into him there is no love or facts in him. Mm -hmm. Because he's getting irri irritable and he's getting angry and he's getting impatient. And he goes, How can a man bear this? <laughs> and he turned and he looked across to his wife and she seemed immovable. She's perfectly at peace. She's just taking care of the child, none of the trial, crying and whining and, 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 and non-stop. It seems to be bothering her. Mm -hmm. And he realized something dawned on him at that point. Why is he read about it and know the theory about it? She passed through the season of training in endurance. Mm -hmm. She had this child since this child was a baby. Mm -hmm. And she's been dealing with crying and sleepless night for seven or eight years. She's been dealing with sickness for seven or eight years. She's been dealing, you understand, with a child uncomfortable and she can't bathe when she want to bathe because the child want to be eaten, the child want to be cuddled and she can't comb her hair how she would like to put on a nice fancy dress because she got to focus on the child. You see, endurance was forged in her by her circumstance. Yeah. Steadfastness that she learned to endure all of the child, challenge her to such a point that she was what? Steady. She was so crystallizing it that she was patient. And she was exemplifying all the fruits of love. Mm. He read about it, but he never what? passed through it. He was untested, unproven. He was like Peter. Mm. Peter truly loved Christ, but Peter was not what? Tested. tested. Oh, come on. Yeah. Peter loved. There are many people love me and love you. But here's the question. Have they been tested? Have they been tried? Has faith accomplished its work? They really want to do good. Mm -hmm. But because endurance have not run its course. You see, they do not know themselves or you do not know them. Mm -hmm. They don't know how they'll react under the circumstances. Yeah. I've been a manager for a long, long time. And this is one of my, my trademark. Depends what I'm looking for. If I'm looking for someone for a position that requires a lot of um, challenge, mm -hmm. it will demand a lot of endurance. It will bring a lot of pressure. Every so often I'll get somebody quite sharp. They're quite talented. And the company I work for, no one manager is allowed to hire someone. You have to minimum get through two. So we just can't be um, biased and just, you know, just one person like a communist. You have to get two agreement on it. And sometimes when I look at their resume, by education, it is stellar. Based on the job description I want them to do, they have all the knowledge in their head. But when I look, they have zero one experience. And I know this job will be demanding and stressful. Yeah. And sometimes one of the managers come to me and go, oh, this guy is perfect. He, he studied this, he studied this, they know this, they know that. And I go, and what have they done? Well, they have done nothing. I go, no. I go, listen to me. This job will crush it. In the midst of this process, he can't go, I got to remember what, what it said in, in the book of 1 Corinthians 30. Am I, I'm supposed to be kind. I'm supposed to be loving. The baby is yelling and crying. You either are tested or you are not. Mm. I'll go, I appreciate your studies and I appreciate the things you are Lord. I want you to go and spend three years or so get some experience. Then when you get some experience, come back, I'll hire you. Mm. I want you tried and tested. Amen. If not, it is unfair to you and unfair to me. You are uncertain. I don't know how you will behave. I don't know under the pressure how you will react. Mm -hmm. And you don't know neither. Are you listening? I go give me the mother that been known with her children for four years and the child been sick and crying and whining. She is tried and tested. Amen. She is bonified. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Mr. Bookworm has to go and get some what? Experiences. Yes. <laughs> he is dangerous like Peter unto himself. He doesn't know how he'll behave in the trenches. I don't know. And when you have other people's life at stake, you better know how he's going to behave. You better know how she's going to act. Are you listening to me? You can't cheat faith. God does not let you cheat faith. God goes, in Bethel, I'm going to bring something that you're going to know exactly what you're like. And I'm going to work some things in you to get what I want out of you. I will get you without defects. I will perfect what is lacking in your steadiness. Every little situation you're running... Every little hardship you can't endure, it's too much for me. 
Every little thing, you lose your temper, you have zero patience, and you call yourself a man and a woman of God? You go, you are my child, but you're not a man. Don't mix them up. You're not a woman. You're a child. Don't mix this concept up. You have not been tried and proven yet. Faith has not accomplished what? It's work. You don't rejoice when it comes for faith to release what's in you. Are you listening to me? Amen. The path the Lord a vital lesson that day. His wife maybe don't read and memorize. But the children, the God had given her, had tried her and tested her and had released endurance and had released steadiness and had released patience. The fruits of the Sassalamasura. Tell somebody faith has to do its work. Faith has to do its work. If not, you are a fraud. You are a counterfeit. You have potential. But the potential has not been released. Give me those who have walked the faith road. They might not have the knowledge. Paul looked at a man and he saw he had faith. The man was crippled all of his life. And Paul knew this man went through some suffering. He knew to move that body and to get around. He went through some hardship. Above him. There was many people with lots of talent and lots of gift. But Paul knew they were not what? Try to You get up. You got faith. He got root. Get up. Job, get up. Why? How could he do it? They have been what? Try. Don't look at nobody and get jealous. Have you been where they've been? Have you released the endurance? Do you know what they had to endure? The sickness, the pressure, the lack. Here's a mystery. North America, and not everyone, is abounded. I am telling you, if we are around long enough, there are many parts of this world, there are many far, far more mature than North Americans. Yes. They have been tested and tried. And in an hour, what shall crush North America? They will remain what? Patient. Mm -hmm. They are the sons and daughters of God. Right? God been forging them for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we that been enjoying the luxury, we have been extremely weak. Mm -hmm. The endurance is very, very limited. Mm -hmm. We have very little patience. Mm -hmm. And as for steadiness, mm -hmm. it's a joke. You see, this is what God is perfected. This is what he was trying to perfect in Abraham in Bethel. This is the other side of holiness. The other side of holiness, you see, is strengthening or crystallization. Meaning, when the Paul talk about it, Paul said, I have learned, Paul had passed through this, as you know, he's been beaten three times, the third night last one, 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 one shy of 40 to finish him off. You understand? But Paul said, I have lowered my faith has been tried. Whether if I have great, I am still patient and happy. And I've learned to live with bountiful amount. And I've learned to live with what? Nothing. I've learned to love, live with sufficient. And I've learned to live with lack. Patient is, you see, faith trying is supposed to make you steady. You don't move. This is where Eve failed. Eve wasn't tested yet. She needed to get to the place that when the devil go, you know, you sure you shouldn't eat it? She's supposed to go, whether I eat it or I don't eat it, irrelevant. Mm -hmm. I'm still steady. I'm holy to God. Yeah, Do you understand? Mm -hmm. A person whose faith has not been tried and tested is a dangerous person unto themselves and to those around them, especially if they're in a position that impact other people. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? They're not, they're not bad people, but they don't know, they themselves don't know how they are what? Behave. They're just like Peter. Peter overestimate that he didn't you understand, understand how faith worked. Christ understood this. Christ knew Peter's faith was not what? Tested. Afterward, in the book of Acts, it was tested. At that point, he go, whether you kill me or not, doesn't matter. He said, God wants to perfect my faith. God wants to perfect my faith. He wants to make sure, he wants to make sure, there's, nothing sure there's nothing lacking in me. There are no defects in me. This is what this is about here. This is what the Lord is trying to perfect at this level of the game. In the name of Jesus. I want to show you something. Once this process, I call this, this is what I call, this is what Job had. This is what Ruth had. She knew, Naomi, we have been tested so much, woman. 
You have lost your husband. I have lost my husband. I have lost my son. How much more you want? You're a sucker for punishment. Ruth got, but in faith will complete its work though. Mm -hmm. Endurance will run it thorough. I have been through seasons of this. I have become steady. There's a point that when things happen, it just, good or bad, it just doesn't what? Moves you. It just is as it is. At this point, temptation doesn't become you that simple. Can't take you down that easy. Trials doesn't bother you. Tribulation, you're like, just another day in the court. This is what we do, good or bad. Strength and hard you. Yes. The Bible says you become like an adamant. You become, you see, adamant is, is as strong as diamond. You see, you have become strengthened. God said, I will strengthen you and harden you to difficulty. In essence, he don't want nothing able to move you but him. Yeah. If you to God, the heart is the yes. Or if not, you are vulnerable. You are lacking. The Bible said, you have to make sure you have no defects. Yeah. Where's the defect? The defect can be coming two things. Your holiness and your faithfulness. Mm. God go, both of these I need to make sure are correct. Bethel fixes these. I'm in the right place. And your faith is not lacking anything. Mm -hmm. Do you understand this, church? Mm -hmm. When you are in this place, I got two more scriptures I want to share with you, then we're going to wrap this up. Go to Genesis uh, chapter 17. I have a feeling through the Spirit of the Lord, you're understanding the importance of what God was after when He sanctified you, Amen. when He moved you from Shechem. Amen? And you're understanding what He's after. James clearly showed why you should consider it joy. Because you are, when, when you are going through channel, you should start to celebrate. People go, what are you doing? You're losing everything. You go, I'm about to come to man with or woman. Yeah. I'm about for endurance to meet its peak. And so forth. Look at Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. The Bible says, when every, now I want you to pay close attention to his age, because I want to show you something. Even though it don't have to be, but because he delays so much. When Abraham was what? 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am, I am, I am Almighty God. Walk and live habitually before me and be perfect, blameless, all hearted, complete. Now let me ask you a question. Let's see how much of you have been paying attention to your Bible. In Genesis chapter 12, Aaron, after his father lead him to Haran, God came a second time and called him. How old was Abraham when God called him from Haran? 75 years old. How old is him now when God telling him walk before me and be perfect? 99. How many years have passed? 24 years. <laughs> he has been tried and tested and tried 24 years after. God goes, no, walk before me and be what? And he still don't get the gift yet from God. Now, he goes, you are hard like a rock. Now, there are no defects in your faith. Now there are no defects in your holiness. 24 years. Now we don't live, many of us don't live half of Abraham's life. Abraham lived 175, Sarah lived 127 years. We don't get there anymore. We go, we follow more the Moses thing now. Yes, which is of a three and a half score. 60 to 80 years at best. So what Abraham took 24 years, we have to do it 12. In fact, it should be faster. Because Abraham is the what? The beginning. He, 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 he starts. So, in essence, God needs to do it in us in about, like Paul, like three years. In about three years, he needs to get the same effect from you. He needs you to walk before him and be what? Perfect. He needs you to walk before him without any defect or nothing lacking in your faith. Nothing lacking in your holiness, in your consecration. You don't put nothing before him. Not your wife, not your husband, not your children, not your ministry. Nothing goes before him. And when hardship come or bountiful come, neither one what? Carries you away. Because your faith has been tried and tested. Endurance has been thorough. Steadfastness has been thorough. Patience is thorough. Mm -hmm. Then God goes, walk before me, Abraham, and be perfect. He goes, now I have done the work I ought to do to get you to the place. Where you ought to be. Here's the funny thing. You know God made you this way. And we you know what the fall of sin is? We were made in God's image in holiness. And we were made in faithfulness. But when, when we fall, we lose what? Both. Mm. Brother Watchman, he loved to say it this way. He said, Think of two mountains. 
we were this one and we were supposed to walk a straight line like a rope to get to the other side. What the fall of sin is, we fall in what? The valley. What redemption is, or salvation, is God what? Picking us up. What to what? To leave us here? No, to bring us to the other side. We still got to get here. He wants to bring you back to holiness and faithfulness. He has to, yes, bring you back. We know this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. You understand? When God, when God on the sixth day, after he, the last thing he made was man. When he made man, the Bible says in verse 31, and then God behold everything and approved everything and said it was good and said it is very good. The word behold in Hebrew, you understand, mean to examine. So after God has done, let's say I make this Bible. And after I finish making the Bible, behold is this, I examine it, I inspect it. And the Bible says, after God had inspected his creation and everything as man, he goes, there's nothing more can be done with this thing. This thing is perfect. I approve it. Yes. So the Bible says, because it was so good, he decided, I'm going to rest. God never rests until he approves, he beholds what he's after. This is why he tells Abraham, walk before me. I've been working for 24 years, in fact, longer than I can behold you. Yes. Ego. Yes. Completion. Yes. He never stopped working in your life until he can behold. Behold is to approve. It is to inspect. It is to accredit. And when he comes in your life, he kind of do the same to you. I have this obsessive principle about my life. It wasn't always there. The closer I get to God. When I'm working on something, I see it in many. I see it in James. I see it in many of you, Pastor Chow, these people are crazy to a certain degree. No second. There's something God awakes in you. That when you're working on a project or something, you can't stop working. You'll do it. And you wake up in the middle of the night, I can do it a little better. God is obsessive until he gets to the thing, to the point where you go, there is nothing more or better can be done with this thing. He doesn't stop until he gets there. And he puts that same spirit in you. That when you're working, whether it's at your job or anywhere, you can't stop until you behold it and go, there is nothing more I can do with this thing. I have done everything. When I prepare for a message, you would like to see me. It goes on for weeks and months. Until I finally, I only can get rest when I feel there is nothing more can be what? Done with it. It's at that point, don't underestimate the rest of 70. It means God gets to the point that he, 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 he is satisfied that he goes, I can't do nothing better with this thing. Mm -hmm. Only then he allows himself to what? Rest. Until then, he works and works. This is why Jesus said, my father is still working, which means he still don't believe it's in the place that he can't behold it. God don't stop working in your life until he gets you to a place that he goes, no, walk before me that I can behold you. There is nothing more I can do in your life. After 24 years, God to Abraham, I'm ready to rest from you. You are finally at the state and the place that I can rest. Now I'll bless you. You say, yes. You can let me, the behold mean, I have inspected, examined, and it satisfied me. And I'm ready to rest. Typically, it's the only time after then I can rest. Before then, even though I'm sleeping, what's happening? My thoughts and feelings, everything's still happening. Everything is still moving. I can be talking to you in a place, and if you have any kind of insight, you go, he's preoccupied. I am still working on this thing. Until I come to the place where I can what? Behold it. I call it see it. I can see it in its entirety. And everything that I expected it or desire or wanted to be is what? That comes from the Lord. God has to give you this or awake it in you. Mm. He made you exactly like him. Mm. People, you always can tell how far they are from God. That can do something and they don't even care. If they, you're like, you didn't even look at it. What's missing is the beholding quality. Mm. They don't care what they do, how it represents them and how well it is done. Mm. That part, it's in the spirit, has not been resurrected. Mm. These are the people who do job and thing and just anyhow. When you behold, you can't get away with that. Mm. You can't get away with that. There's something in you make you gotta give it everything you got. got. Until you go, I have give 
Based on the skills and talent I have, I have done everything I could based on what God gave me. You know you didn't hold back nothing. Mm. Are you listening to me? Mm. And so forth. This is how that process works. We call it you're obsessed. Why can't you just do it and leave it mediocre? No, no, no. Mm. God didn't make you that. Once your spirit is resurrected, that can never happen. Mm. When your wife get up or you or go out of bed or you, your husband go out of bed, you'll get up and keep working. Because it's just not the... I'll say it in a practical way. The image you're seeing inside, it's not matching up what? Outside. You don't stop until what you manifest outside match up with how you perceive it it's inside. Good, yeah. Only then you get rest. Mm -hmm. So God had an image from the day he called Abraham in Mesopotamia. He had seen him a certain way. And he didn't stop working for 24 years till he get Abraham. So he go, walk before me. I am matching up. I am beholden two things. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. No defects. Are you listening to me? That is the work. That was, those are the thoughts and the purpose. God already is working with a pattern. And he's trying to bring you into that pattern. Are you listening to me?